Okay, let's talk about the CLEP College Algebra exam. And if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing for the CLEP College Algebra exam, and that is excellent. This is an outstanding opportunity. The CLEP program, I mean, is amazing. As you probably already know, uh, the CLEP program gives you an opportunity to test out and get college credit uh, for a particular uh, course. Uh, in this case, uh, it's going to be college algebra. There is another uh, CLEP uh, math uh, exam. It's the CLEP College Mathematics, which is considerably more um, advanced than the, the CLEP uh, College Algebra. But nevertheless, uh, College Algebra is a pretty common course in college, okay, and at the university level. So if you can get credit for this, then that's outstanding. Uh, so anyways, um, again, we're talking about the CLEP. It's going to save you two uh, precious things in our lives, okay? Everyone's life. And uh, for yours and mine, the two most uh, precious things are going to be uh, time and money, okay? Well, these are what some of the most valuable, you know, resources outside of the things that we get from our family and our loved ones and whatnot. You don't want to waste your time and you don't want to waste your money. And if you can get credit, okay, for the things you've already studied, all right, you're going to save a ton of time and a ton of money in college. So it's definitely a worthwhile endeavor. So what I have here for you is a practice problem that you should be able to do pretty confidently if you are fully prepared for the CLEP College Algebra exam. Of course, I'm going to solve this here in a second. But uh, if you want to go ahead and pause the video and uh, solve it and put your answer into the comment section, that would be awesome as well. So I'm going to get into the solution to this uh, particular problem in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and I've developed um, an outstanding CLEP College Algebra math prep course. I'm going to leave a link uh, to that in the description of this video. But I've had many, many people use my CLEP uh, uh, college algebra math test prep course with success. Okay, so I definitely know you can uh, uh, pass if you have the right material and enough time, you can get through and pass this CLEP college algebra exam. But uh, in order to do, uh, in order to be successful on the CLEP college algebra exam, you're going to be able to uh, uh, handle problems like this. So before I solve this problem, just real quick, college algebra is effectively the equivalent of like high school algebra two. Okay, so typically when you're in high school, you'll take an algebra one course. Now yeah, it could be a little bit different for some of you out there, but uh, this is probably the most common courses that uh, high school students take. Algebra one, geometry, algebra two, then maybe like pre-calculus or statistics. So college algebra is basically pretty close to what you learn at the algebra two level, okay, of mathematics. So what is in the algebra two level? Well, you have things like polynomial equations, quadratic equations, systems, uh, matrices, uh, you know, all kinds of linear equations, rational equations. There's a lot of stuff. And the topic that we're dealing with here is logarithmic and exponential equations. Okay, so this is a full chapter that you should have studied somewhere along the line in Algebra 2. Now, if you didn't take Algebra 2, well, you're going to have a tough time on a college algebra exam unless you take my math uh, course and you have enough time to learn it. If you take my full math course, you can still uh, be successful on the CLEP uh, college algebra exam. But uh, mostly, um, I think this test is designed for those of you that have already completed at least up to algebra 2, but maybe even pre-calculus as well. All right, let's get into this problem now. And if you know what you're doing, this should be pretty easy, okay? So uh, if you want to give yourself an opportunity to solve this before I get into it, uh, go ahead and pause the video and put your answer into the comment section. So let's go ahead and get into it. So what are we talking about here? Well, we're dealing with an exponential equation. We have our little exponent up here. Uh, our variable is in our exponent. So we have this uh, uh, letter down here, E. That's our base E, okay? And hopefully... This, um, you know, uh, you know, you're looking at this and you're not like t entirely lost. You're like, oh yeah, this looks familiar. So instead of e, let's use a, a simpler um, base. Let's use two x maybe to the seventh. Okay. So this is an exponential equation. Again, we're uh, solving uh, for the um, the exponent. Okay. So again, exponential equation. Now the main thing that you have to remember when you're dealing with exponential equations is the following, okay? So we have exponential equations and we have logarithmic equations. When you're solving exponential equations, you need to use logarithms, okay? 
And when you're solving logarithmic equations, you need to use exponents because ex, uh, exponents and logarithms, they are uh, these are uh, inverse functions of one another. So when you look at this right off the bat, you need to be thinking logarithms. Now, there's two types of logarithms that, you, uh, that we use. Now, if you go into your calculator, you'll see this LOG button. Yeah, that's a terrible LOG. I could do better than that. You'll see this LOG button, and you'll also see this LN button, okay? So this uh, LOG button is what we call common log, okay? It's base 10, and LN, LNE is really log base E, okay? So anytime we have the uh, a base that's E, we want to use the LN uh, function. Now, we couldn't use the uh, LOG button, and get the right answer, but you uh, you know you just want to be in the habit is every time you anytime you see um, e base e you're thinking l n okay all right so with that being said that's just a quick uh, overview let's get into actually how we solve this problem okay so the first thing we need to do we have to isolate this part of the problem we have to isolate uh, the base and the exponent. So you can see I have this uh, e to the 2x minus 1 is equal to 2. So let's go ahead and move that 1 to the other side of the equation. So it gives me e to the 2x is equal to 3. Okay, so this would be similar to like our, our equation right here, 2x is equal to 7. So we just have a base, an exponent, and a number. This is where you want to get the problem to, and now we're at this point. Now at this point in the problem, you want to take the log of both sides of the equation, okay? So in this particular uh, example, 2x is equal to 7, we would take the log of both sides, okay? Now, again, we're dealing with base e, so we're going to take the ln of both sides of the equation. So ln e to the 2x is equal to ln 3. Now, just uh, so you can keep this in perspective, I can go into my calculator and get ln3 and just type that in. That's just a number. It's just a decimal. So you don't want to panic here and be like, oh, I'm just dealing with all this crazy ln stuff. No, these are numbers, and we are gonna we can simplify this here in a second. But let me go back to this other little basic little example problem right here. So here I have log 2x. The secret to solving logarithmic um, equa uh, uh, exponential equations where we take the log of both sides is knowing the property of logarithms. So the most important property, in my opinion, when it comes to these equations is that we can now move the x in front of the log. Okay, that's the property. So we can rewrite this as x is equal to log 2 is equal to log 7 for uh, in this particular example. Okay, this is a property of logarithms. You need to know that. So in this case, I'm like, oh, okay, I can write, I can take my whole little exponent down here and write it uh, right there. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to move this down right there. So it's going to give me 2x is equal to ln e is equal to ln 3. All right. So uh, at this point, now we're just going to use some basic algebra. But my question to you is, uh, what is the value of ln e? Okay. ln e is equal to what? You don't even need your calculator. Put your answer into the comment section. What is the answer? Hopefully, all of you said 1. It's nothing but 1, and you would be correct. So ln e is 1, so I'll, now I just have 2x is equal to ln 3. So I want to solve for x. What do I need to do? Well, it's basic algebra, right? Just simply going to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 2. So I get x is equal to ln 3 divided by 2, and I am done. Okay, so now at this point, I could go into my calculator and get myself a decimal approximation, but this problem, I mean, this answer right here in this form is perfectly fine. Matter of fact, it's the preferred way uh, that probably most math teachers would want to see this. So ln3 over 2, that is correct. And if you got that right, let me go ahead and give you a happy face and a plus and a 100%. Nice job. Okay, that shows me that, you know, you have some good knowledge about logarithms and exponential functions. Now, this is a pretty, um, I would say, mid-range, not an overly difficult problem. Uh, so if you were lost on this, well, that's an indication that you're probably not fully ready for uh, the CLEP College Algebra exam. Okay, it doesn't mean that you don't take it, but you, know, you want to be fully ready because you don't want to leave anything to chance when you go in and take these particular exams. So, uh, But if you got this right, you, you know, there's other stuff that you need to know as well. The bottom line is it pays to study. Okay, You always want to overstudy for an exam 
like the CLEP uh, college algebra exam because the benefits of passing are so awesome. Okay, again, you're going to save yourself uh, money and time. Okay, so that is an outstanding uh, goal to uh, go for. And, um, you know, wherever you're at, okay, even if you've done well in high school math, you still need to study. Okay, and my course can definitely help you out. Again, I'm going to leave a link to my CLEP college algebra uh, course uh, in uh, the description of this video. But again, you can, uh, even if you struggled in high school math, don't underestimate your the possibility of you, um, um, you know, passing this, okay? Uh, it's definitely possible. You know, go in and take the test. You know, again, I think you'll probably do a lot better than you think you can, but you need the right materials. Again, uh, I'm going to leave... Uh, uh, the link to my CLEP, uh, college algebra math prep course in the description of this video. Don't forget to subscribe, by the way. i um, been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand videos on my uh, channel, Basic to Advanced Math. A lot of that stuff can help you prepare for the CLEP as well. And if this video helped you out in some way, please go ahead and consider smashing that like button. And leave me some feedback. Um, were you considering taking the CLEP college math exam? Okay. And how did you find out about the CLEP? Uh, exam as well. I'm interested uh, in knowing about that. Was your uh, uh, your high school math teacher? Maybe it was your guidance counselor. But programs like the CLEP should be, everyone should know about this, okay? Because we're really talking about free money. If you've learned something and you have an opportunity to test out and get full credit for it, well, that's pretty awesome, okay? So uh, even if you're not taking the CLEP exam or you're still not sure, just the fact that you know about the CLEP exam is, uh, you know, an advantage. Okay, so I definitely wish you all the best on the CLEP exam. Thank you for your time and have a great day.